Hi YouTubers. Wanted to give you a quick update. Look at that guy. Covered in ick still. The snakeskin has it the worst. And hopefully this video will be better than that horrible one with the red light. Um, it's weird because with the red light I could really see a big difference but on video it just was horribly a big red glare. But in real time for me it really you could see every little dot on him. So now it's uh, morning and there's some natural light and I thought I would try to put in a, a light above here and see if we could get a better shot of what we're dealing with. He's hiding. The Turk actually has less snow on him. He's almost completely free of the little white dots, but his colors were off. His fins are still a little frayed looking. You can just tell he's not at optimum health. His color's not right. He's looking a little raggedy. This guy's looking a whole lot yucky. Frayed fins, covered in ick. Look at that. There we go. Now you can see. So yes, discus can get ick. And I am not sure why some of the forums say are telling like new people to the hobby, oh, you know, that's that's fish for, at lower temperatures that can get that. Um, because discus are kept at high temperatures, they can't get ick. I don't I don't I don't even understand that because it's just not true. Here we have 83 degrees, 83 degrees, and we have ick. It's really hard to tell on pigeon bloods because they're white. They have a white background. But if you look at her fin, look at that back fin. See how frayed it is? It's got that cloudy look. That's enough. You can also see it um, in the clearest part of their eyes is another good place to see it on light colored discus. You know, but the overall health, you can see some scales lifted up on her. They just look rough, raggedy. Their behavior is classic. Um, we have a lot of head pointing down. I wouldn't really call that hand, uh, head standing per se. It's more of like they're fixated on their own reflections. They're not used to a bare bottom tank. So... But the huddling in the corner is definitely due to illness. That's a classic sign. So, uh, right now they're in clean, fresh water. When I woke up this morning, um, the whole tank was nice and blue and dark, and they had sat in that malachite green in uh, Furan 2 and the third drug that I can never remember, but it's in the comments of the last video. Oh my god, I don't know why I can never remember it, but it's basically the malachite green and the formaldehyde type drug. And that's pretty much standard. That's going to be your go-to care. There's all kinds of different meds on the market. And basically that's what you're going to want to look for. You want the ones that have the malachite green. And I'm just going to go over here really quick so I can read what this drug is. Because it's going to drive me crazy not knowing. Okay, so malachite green. Can we focus? Formalin. Thank you. I don't know why I can never remember that. Formalin. Okay, this formalin combination. Um, one of the things I've noticed is a lot of the newer medicines, the formalin is usually called something else. Like there's some new medicine, I don't know, some new formulation or something. Um, maybe it's not as strong, I don't know. I'm not sure, but I have noticed that on newer medications, they've been changing it. And there's like Paragard who has their proprietary alhydes or whatever they call them. They won't even tell you what they're doing. 
and I have used Paragard, but it takes a lot longer. It's, it's just, it's a very weak solution. And this ick was so thick, as you can see. I mean, it was bad. And it seems like it's resistant. It definitely is resistant to high temps, that's for sure. Um, I've got the big tank cooking at 90 degrees. And I'm going to leave it like that for a good 14 days. And that that's going to pretty much guarantee that there is nothing living as far as protozoa in there. They just cannot survive over 90 degrees. And I know that from scientific studies from the University of Florida who is a great resource for anybody that has fish. Let me tell you, they are on the cutting edge of science. I love that university because they freely share all of their studies and all of their information. They really want to help the general public and kudos to the University of Florida for doing that. No charge, just really helping the, the community. So big thumbs up to the University of Florida. So that's it, guys. Better luck next time.